Dear friends, welcome to our channel, India China Cultural Forum. We produce educational videos on India China cultural relations. My name is Dr. Das Bikashkali. I am a researcher on India China relations and the founder and deputy director of Shufancheng Culture Study Center. Today, we are going to know about the Chinese Sanskrit scholar Shufancheng. In the modern history of India and China relations, Tagore, Than Yunshan and Shu Fanzhang were the pioneers to promote India-China cultural exchanges. This is the timeline of Shu Fanzhang's life, a brief biography. October 26, 1909, he was born in Changsha, Hunan province of China. In the early years, he was taught by the student of late Qing dynasty Confucian scholar Wang Kaiyun. 1927 to 1929, Professor Shu. Studied history at Zhongshan University and then Western literature in Fudan University. From 1929 to 1932, he studied fine arts and philosophy at the University of Königsberg, Germany. From 1945 to 1950, he studied and taught in India at China Bhavan Vishwa Bharati Shanti Niketan, West Bengal. From 1951 to 1978. He lived in Pondicherry and taught at Aurobindo Ashram Institution. From 1978, he went back to Beijing as a senior researcher at Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. Professor Shu came to India in 1945 under the India-China Cultural Exchange Program and joined the China Bhavan, the Institute of Chinese Language and Culture, at Vishwa Bharati University, founded. In 1937, it is a center of Sino-Indian cultural studies located at Shantini Ketan in West Bengal. Shu Fancheng did his study and research at Shantini Ketan for three years. He taught the philosophy of Ouyang Jingyu at Shina Bhavan. The philosophy of Ouyang Jingyu is the combination of pure Buddhism and Confucianism with original consciousness theory as the focus. Professor Shu came to Pondicherry in 1951. He lived in Pondicherry for 27 years. Mother Mira Alfaza had higher affinity towards Professor Shu. She provided him with all necessary supports for his works in translating various Indian philosophical books to Chinese. Professor Shu was the first Chinese to introduce Sri Aurobindo to China. He translated many of Sri Aurobindo's books, which included The Life Divine, On Yoga, Integral Yoga, Yoga Later Set. Professor Shu translated 50 Upanishads in 1984. He was able to recount Confucius thoughts represented by Lu Wang's philosophical school of the Ming Dynasty by basing on the philosophical thought of Sri Aurobindo. The major ideas and theories contained in the Upanishads spread in China along with Buddhism. This gave a major impact on Chinese philosophy. In 1957, Professor Shu published the Chinese version of the Bhagavad Gita and Kalidasa's original Sanskrit work Meg Dhuta. Professor Shu adopted an original style of Li Zhao and Chinese poetry by composing his own poems on the basis of original meaning. Introducing Indian culture to China. This is one of the facts that Professor Shu did in his whole life. He introduced Bhagavad Gita, Upanishads, Kalidasa Shankutnala from Sanskrit to Chinese, the Life Divine, Integral Yoga, and many other works of Sri Aurobindo. We can find Professor Shu's handwritten manuscript of Bhagavad Gita kept at the Shanghai National Museum. Professor Shu possesses the ability to translate Sanskrit text into traditional Chinese. Number second is introducing Western culture to China. Professor Shu was well versed in nine languages, which included English, German, French, Sanskrit, Latin, and Greek. He had in-depth study of Chinese culture as well as Indian and Western culture. Professor Shu translated Nietzsche's philosophy to Chinese. Lu Xun mentioned many times about Professor Shu in his diary. Shu Fancheng was a friend and follower of Lu Xun. Number three, introducing Chinese culture to the world. Professor Shu translated Confucianism and Corpus of Sun Tzu to English. 
professor shu compared sanskrit to changsha dialect from a phonological point to demonstrate the influence of buddhism on native languages in china and the cultural exchange and assimilation between china and india this provided new approach and aspirations for india china culture studies professor shu was the first chinese scholar who systematically represented the great upanishads in chinese Chinese ambassador Luo Zhaowei, former Chinese ambassador to India, Luo Zhaowei was a student of Shu Fancheng. On March 10, 2018, in memory of Shu Fancheng, Ambassador Luo Zhaowei co-inaugurated the symposium of Shu Fancheng at Pondicherry. Later, a book compiled on the events of the symposium of Shu Fancheng. Essays in Memory of Shu Fancheng was compiled by Chinese Embassy Department of Culture. Many prominent scholars like Professor Huang Xingchuan, Professor Huang Xianyan, Professor Lokesh Chandra, Professor Priyadarshi Mukherjee, Professor Nirmala Sharma wrote about in this book. On December twenty-seven, two thousand eighteen, it was inaugurated by FM of China Wang Yi and our former External Affairs Minister. of india sushma swaraj professor shu lived at pondicherry for 27 years shu fancheng painted more than 500 chinese paintings and chinese calligraphy around 300 paintings and calligraphy are preserved at aurobindo ashram studio many of the paintings are affected due to the climatic condition called fogging On January 4, 2020, a group of Indian and Chinese scholars, led by Professor Than Sen, the director of the Center of Global Asia and professor of history at New York University Shanghai, visited Pondicherry to study the paintings of Shu Fancheng. On October 26, 2020, celebrating the 111th birth anniversary of Shu Fancheng and 70 years of India-China cultural relations. Shu Fancheng Culture Study Center was inaugurated at Pondicherry. The Shu Fancheng Culture Study Center was inaugurated by the Chinese Ambassador to India, His Excellency Sun Weidong, and former Chief Minister of Pondicherry, Sri V. Narayana Swami. Understanding of India-China cultural relations requires an understanding of contemporary cultures at both the international and national levels. The most effective way. to understand india china contemporary culture is to analyze the trends of its youth our culture is our customs beliefs and attitudes it is the way of life that the peoples or society follow at a particular time shu fancheng culture study center is a platform for youths in the field of india china cultural relations our focus area includes heritage art music literature history education tourism architecture cultural contacts trade the role of culture in sustainable development goals youth and culture etc this is the future project of shu fancheng culture study center dear friends thank you to watch our video we hope you will subscribe to our channel thanking you